What is going on, everyone? Welcome back. Last week we covered salinity. So if you haven't, check that video out and let's dive into alkalinity. Alkalinity measures the ability of a solution to neutralize acids to the equivalence point of carbonate and bicarbonate. So in relatively simple terms, you just want to think of alkalinity as carbonate. It'll make it a lot easier. There are a few popular ways that a lot of people test for alkalinity. One is the Hanna checker that I've been using for a while. It's about $50 and the reagents are about $9, but it gives you very accurate testing results. On the other hand, um, you have the titration method uh, that has been around for a long time. And actually I've used this in the past. Uh, Red Sea makes a very good kit. Um, I've also used the Salifer test hit to test uh, alkalinity as well. Uh, they're both fairly accurate, but the Hanna checker by far is the most accurate I've used. So why do people test it on a regular basis? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, it's not as abundant in our reef tanks as calcium and magnesium, so the levels could rise and fall much more quickly. So what is alkalinity's role in our reef tank? Well, it's a fairly complicated process, but we know that corals use carbonate, which is a component of alkalinity, and calcium to form calcium carbonate to build their skeletons. Now, how fast our reef tanks consume alkalinity is going to be depending on what types of corals you have in your tank. For example, soft, soft tanks and LPS tanks are going to consume alkalinity much slower than SPS dominated tanks. So how do you keep it stable? Well, there's really four main ways that you can do that. Um, one is with a water change schedule. Another way is with calcium hydroxide, other known as Kalkwasser. Another way, uh, which is very popular that I would say majority of reefers use is two part. Two part is actually three part. Uh, you have your calcium, your alkalinity, and your magnesium. This is actually my backup system in case anything on my calcium reactor were to fail. I could just switch over to two part until I fixed what was wrong with my calcium reactor. And it's actually happened to me in the past, so I'm glad I had it. The more advanced method would be your calcium reactor, which is a very good way if you have a large system especially with a high demand of calcium and alkalinity. Um, it doses it in equal parts and it has a higher upfront cost, but in the long run, it's definitely worth it. And it keeps your levels very, very stable. So the acceptable range for alkalinity is seven to 12 dKH. Now I run mine around eight and there's a couple of reasons why I do that. Number one is it's in that middle of that range. So I have a little bit of leeway if my ranges do fluctuate, I'm still in that range in case something were to happen to my calcium reactor or my two part. The other reason is where I get my coral from. I try to match my tank parameters as closely with theirs as possible to increase the coral survivability. There's really no right and wrong answer where to run your alkalinity, just make sure that you're being consistent and you're keeping your level stable. And if you have to make adjustments, make sure they're done over several days and avoid those spikes. All right, guys, I tried to keep this as simple as possible. Next week, we'll be going into calcium. So if you like this video, please hit that like button, put a comment down below, and please subscribe and we will see you guys next week.